Hello, my name is Janie and welcome to Face Daily Sight Reading. Today I want to talk about some sight reading tips. The first thing I want to offer to you with strengthening your sight reading is this, memorization and patterns. I believe that learning to read music is like learning to read a language. The different notes and rhythms are separate phonemes for this language. However, to make words and sentences, we must put together these separate speech sounds. So what we do is form patterns and memorize their pronunciations. For instance, someone advanced in the English language might recognize this word as square but its meaning is dependent on the context. Either one from geometry referring to a quadrilateral with equal sides and angles, or it can refer to a personality trait referring to a born person. Fun fact, this is actually a term that is uh, said to originate from the American jazz community. Looking at any pattern, I instantly know how to pronounce them. There are smaller words and smaller musical patterns, and there are larger words and larger mu musical patterns. Noticing and practicing these outside of just sight reading can be very beneficial, and you can create exercises for these yourselves. Just use keys or scales and practice the patterns to where when you see them and recognize them, you don't have to sound out the word or sound out each individual note, but instead they are one unit that has one meaning, but more than that in my next video. Which leads me to memorization. After you obtain the ability to notice more and more patterns in practice, you will be able to look ahead which allows you to look away from the music at the audience, conductor, fellow musicians, anywhere other than that boring black and white sheet of paper. But memorizing music quickly allows you to internalize the music. If you memorize and perfect the piece with pitch and rhythm, then move to musicality and you can do so quickly because you've learned the piece very quickly and learned how to practice efficiently by not having to drill yourself on the musical words because you know them beforehand and can read them dramatically. Hello, my name is Jamie with the Face Daily Sight Reading. Today I want to talk about more sight reading tips. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to be discussing how to create exercises for yourself. First things first, master keys, rhythm values, and meters. Then add to your dictionary as you go. Know that you can only better yourself in areas you understand. Here we are talking about how to play patterns besides the scales and simple rhythms we've been performing since we have started musical training. So to create exercises, you need to first set a goal. It can be a very small one, like mastering one simple rhythm, or it can be a long-term goal, like mastering all potential rhythms down to the 16th note value in 4-4 time. Once you have your goal, take that goal and play a scale in that rhythm. This uses scales and reinforces them, while working on another skill rather than just performing that rhythm in one pitch, using half effort and not really being engaged. For another example, if you wanted to get better in a certain key or mode, write patterns using those notes and then like with everything else musically, start slow and build up speed over time. Before you know it, you've mastered your task. Keep your practice active and engaging. The more you tune yourself out and just put your one warm-up routine on cruise control, the less you are going to get out of it. I remember starting to learn the bassoon. It was overwhelming because the fingerings there were much more complicated to my brain than the fingerings for horn or euphonium. And so what helped me with the fingerings was learning songs, mastering scales, and the normal progression for bassoon, and not just jumping to the hard ones, and then trying to sight read. For all who are curious, I'm still not a great bassoonist, but I know more fingerings I did before. All because this was certainly not my first instrument, and I understood many rhythms and was able to just focus on the notes and fingerings for this adventure. Hello, my name is Jamie with the Face Daily Sight Reading. Today I want to talk about more sight reading tips. Now to warn you, this is a video to help musicians who have to read more than one staff or have to coordinate multiple musicians. Like a pianist who has separate hands playing different rhythms and lines, or a jazz set player or organist who is reading a part that instructs both hands and feet. When starting to sight read or even just start to read the music, instructors will begin the student with a single hand on the piano, then alternate with the other hand. Then, all of a sudden and very quickly, things get more complicated and the learner is overwhelmed with the demands of the contrasting parts between the different musicians. Then gradually it becomes more and more familiar, and then eventually you aren't thinking about your basic pedaling on the piano at all. This is the same process you should use to work on sight reading on these sorts of instruments. When sight reading, if you aren't ready to read all the parts at the same time, then start with one hand or sing a line and then read the others before putting them back together. This process will both strengthen those individual parts of your technique and your instrument, but also build foundations. All that being said, it's necessary to move toward being able to sight read the whole part from the start and not do it line by line. But this will come with time. Ultimately, sight reading your parts that are complicated makes you hireable when you want to gig, and it makes your learning process shorter when you get music in advance. 
more about the Venus Sight Reading in the link below. Do not give up on trying to sight read on your more complicated instrument. It can be done. Break it down, work on your technique, and like any skill, practice properly and frequently, it will get better. Hello, my name is Jamie with the Face Daily Sight Reading. Today I want to talk about more sight reading tips. Many people that I see sight read can perform many of the right pitches. Maybe a wrong note here or there because of the key or accidentals carrying through the measure. Most of the time, the issues are with rhythm and keeping the sight reading in time. This is what I talk about today, how to keep your sight reading in time. First things first, what has your as a teacher been saying forever? Well, for many of us, it was to put the metronome on. It may get to the point where the relentless, merciless ping of that clicking monster eventually limits, but for all of us to need something that grounds us rhythmically, especially if there are others performing with us. So the metronome comes out and it beats us out of the head what the beat is. You can choose to ignore it, but if we do, we won't be using those tools we should. With sight reading, we must make decisions performed in time. We choose to not give in and try to go back to fix what we missed. We must keep going, otherwise we are practicing the piece or exercise, not the skill of sight reading. So if the rhythm is something you struggle with, choose your favorite note and sight read the rhythms either out of a rhythm book or rhythms of a piece with pitches and pretend that all the pitches are the same tone. And perform with a metronome. Once you've performed once or enough of it, try it with the correct pitches, with the metronome continuing. Over time, build up your skill where you don't need to crush at the first step and you can sight read melodies pitch and all. Sometimes sight reading is hard and it's too much for amateurs and pros to read the first time through. But the better we are at the skill, the quicker we will learn new pieces of music. Your sight reading ability directly correlates to the rate at which you learn new material musically. Hello, my name is Jamie with the Face Daily Sight Reading. Today we want to talk about more sight reading tips. If you are watching this video, at some point you have made a mistake in performing a piece of music. Some musicians say that there is no such thing as a perfect performance. And even if you believe there is, you should try treating more of your practice like a performance from time to time and you will find things to improve on. Now, when you made a mistake, did you shut down? Walk off the stage? Give up? Try it again? I've heard stories of great musicians who are building the intensity of the performance up to a single high note and then missed it. Some actually let the band go back and do it again so they could perform the climax. Others just kept going as if nothing happened. Some keep going, but you can tell by their facial expressions or other telltale signs that something didn't quote go correctly. Whatever it is, how you react to mistakes defines your, per defines your personality. Whatever it is, how you react is part of the performance. This is especially true for musical theater. If you have found this channel to strengthen your music abilities and shorten the time necessary to learn a new piece because you are from the theater world, you know that facial expressions can do for a performance. Good ones that are appropriate to the production are welcomed and complete the performance, whereas poor facial expressions distract, distract the audience from the story and our message of the play. Marching bands have a very visual aspect about them, and since the wink from the Blue Coats 2016 show, we know that facial expressions in reaction to what was experienced has a huge effect on how the music is received. Sometimes it is best to do a retake on a note or two in practice, but in many performances it would be best to keep pressing on and take the mistake. In sight reading, do your best to force yourself to keep going. This will force you to, make them, to take your mistake and learn from it instead of correcting it. You aren't really correcting. Sight reading is the first performance of the piece, not the second or third time you've attempted that rhythm or note. Now in practice when working on a piece beyond sight reading, either finish the phrase, stop and fix it, or drill, or perfect, or learn, whatever it takes to improve. That is a different situation than that in sight reading. Hello, my name is Amy Wong with the Face Daily Sight Reading. Today I want to talk about more sight reading tips. This video is rather specifically aimed at percussionists. This is meant to go through and verbalize some things specific to sight reading of percussion instruments. Now, percussion instruments, like all instruments, can be categorized by the sash horn bustle system for musical instruments classification derived by Eric Maurice von Hornbostel and Kurt Sachs, and first published in 1914. But I want to just use pitched and unpitched instruments for this video. For sight reading on pitched instruments, it is very similar to sight reading on other pitched non-percussion instruments, with the added condition that players' eyes have a lot to look at. Instead of having a bassoon beside you or a double bass neck above your head, pitched percussion instruments are fairly uniform across type. For instance, times are pretty much just chimes, and are going to be fairly uniform size no matter what instrument you play on. But depending on how you stand or in many other variables, the notes shift and, music and muscle mem memory is harder to develop. 
For our friends that play these instruments, I would recommend checking out my first tips in sight reading video and really work on memorization. This will allow you to not have to look at the music so much and you can look at the instrument and other musicians or even the conductor more. Memorization is key for keyboard and pitched percussion instruments. For sight reading on non-pitched percussion instruments, it is in some ways simpler in that rhythm is the priority and doesn't have to share a spotlight with pitch. This is still technique to concern yourself with but there is always technique concerns on every instrument. To develop musicianship and sight reading skills, you can find passages, exercises, and pieces of music that are unique to that instrument, or you can adapt from other instruments. You can play the rhythm of the Stars and Stripe piccolo solo on the triangle if you want it. Hello, my name is Jamie Wilk with Bass Daily Sight Reading. Today I want to talk about more sight reading tips. Are you in a rut? Do you feel like your practice effectiveness is flatlining and you haven't gotten better for a while now? Well, if you are practicing, then that isn't true. Just based on what I have learned watching other videos on neuroscience on YouTube, each time you perform an action, you have either created a neural pathway or you are strengthening it. So as long as you are doing something, you are changing and something is happening in your brain and your brain will control your muscles. Now, how do you fix your rut? Well, when you want to realize progress or the lack of it, you need to document. For example, if I felt like my studies in octatonic scales weren't progressing, I should document it. Now at the end of the week or month or whatever time period, I can look at this and if I want to be really nerdy, I can create a chart that shows that even though towards the end of my progress slowed, it kept going. Now when your progress in sight reading may seem harder to track, so I will provide something that may give you some confidence. As a nerd, I created this spreadsheet. Now for the clarinet, I want to work on my normal major scales. So here are the 12 major scales. And then I rated them on their difficulty, so I would feel better about how my progress was was starting when I could easily play my G major scale, but my B major scale left much to be desired. Then I record myself playing the scales with a metronome. And then in the sheet I included the tempos for that day and the amount of notes and rhythms I missed. And then this score was produced for each scale, and then over time you can see that each of the scales got better. For sight reading, you take the example and divide it and based on the key meter and other variables, track your ability to sight read and those keys. But you don't need a fancy spreadsheet if you don't want that. Instead, you can just write down different things about your music making and journal and be your own private instructor and make yourself better based on what you want to get. Hello, my name is Jamie with the Faith's Daily Sight Reading. Today I want to talk about more sight reading tips. For some musicians, sight reading is their, is their least favorite part of anything. Some musicians want to jump to the part where they know how to perform it and perform it. This is easier said than done. But what can help you get there is what I call pre-sight reading. Pre-sight reading is an invaluable first glance of the music. Here's how it works. When you first look at the music, you should look at a few things before charging forward and attempting it. First, look at the key and time signatures. These truths will remain in effect for some time. They may change, and if they do, make special note of them. Second, look, at, look for repeats or other signs that tell you what order to perform the, the measures in, such as DC, DS, Alcoda, first and second endings. All of these things will help you so you don't have to search for these things later. Third, do a scan of, for any accidentals that can change the standard pictures you would choose otherwise. Finally, take a quick glance at the rhythms. If there is one spot that has a lot of ink on the page, this could be a trouble spot where you should focus and be warned that things get rough. This whole process should take anywhere from 5 seconds to up to 30 seconds max. Any more than this and you have stopped pre-sight reading and have begun practicing the piece in your head. This is a very short glance that you can get at, as a freebie to avoid a mistake or two or more. There are, is a difference between pre-sight reading, sight reading, and practicing. If you are practicing the skill of sight reading, limit your pre-sight reading and practicing. This will li only limit the benefit you get from testing and exercising your ability to grasp new music as quick as possible. If you are not practicing sight reading and trying to increase that ability, you are instead in a professional situation, including places like school, church, gigs, concerts, and rehearsals. Don't limit your pre-sight reading, maybe even try some audiation to assist your first performance in that music. To briefly define audiation, it is the hearing pitches in your head without any recreation of the music. This could be stretched to rhythms and style and other sp aspects of performing music and visualization of performing the music without interrupting what else is happening 
while you are preparing to actually make music. Hello, my name is Jamie, and welcome to Faith's Daily Sight Reading. Today I want to talk about more sight reading tips. I have been trying to be very careful about using the word play in my videos. I don't want to do anything to exclude vocalists, choir kids, singers, or in other words, a large portion of the musical community. But now this is a video just for vocalists. Because sometimes when we say we are a musician, the follow-up question conversationally is, what instrument do you play? Implying that singers are not musicians, which is far from the truth. Vocalists have a, have a tough time with their instrument as it is. It's basically impossible to view, it can't be taken to the shop in exchange for a rental, you can't just push down buttons or anything like that and at least limit the number of pitches possible. Nope, it's rough. Which makes sight reading difficult for vocalists as well. An advantage could be not having to remember difficult fingerings and weird keys, but instead just needing to know where Do is and if there are accidentals knowing whether to raise or lower the pitch. Now, if this is all that is known, the singer should work to expand that beyond this level. But for sight reading, I have a few tips to help out. First of all, challenge yourself. Yeah, it's hard, but you've got to look at new music at some point. You want to communicate and share your art, right? So just go for it and get better with your ear training, diction, and pronunciation, and be able to do more and more of it in the first time around. Second, when you are sight reading, try and do it in the key written, and either and sound either the starting note or the key center. Only change the key or read it in a different key intentionally if you need to raise or lower for range reasons. Also, audiation is a tool that I mentioned in my previous video, um, and it was developed by Dr. Edwin Gordon of Eastman. Use this tool and develop your musical ear to hear the pitches. How do you do that? Well, if you can play an instrument, either play along with your singing if you can, or record your playing and then sing along. You, or have a friend or practice partner play while you sing along, or even better, in alternation back and forth. But always check to see if you remember the pitch, and always record and listen back like every musician should. Hello, my name is Jamie, welcome to Face Daily Sight Reading. Today I want to talk about more sight reading tips. Practice! Well, that's all for this video. Honestly, that's it. I'm going to expand on how to practice sight reading and its importance, but practicing sight reading is my tip for this video on how to get better. It is something I've said in other videos, but it's worth talking about. Sight reading has many benefits, as I've discussed before. Sight reading is a skill, as I've discussed before. Sight reading is the reading and performing of a piece of music or song in music notation that the performer has not seen before, also called a prima vista. So practice this skill. Practice reading and performing a piece of music that you haven't seen before. Learn to read music and learn to read music efficiently, because the lines, dots, and Italian words mixed with other odd symbols will only get you so far musically. Getting off that page and making music is what we should all want to do. So to practice reading and performing a piece of music that you haven't seen before. You can do this by finding examples. Again, this service exists at Face Daily Sight Reading, but you can find music yourself if you would so wish to. And then go for it. Remember, tips in sight reading number eight, and unleash your ability to read that music. Find the patterns that we talked about in tips of sight reading number one and follow them. That's all. Just keep practicing sight reading. Well, that's all for this video. Have a great day and enjoy your musical journey.